How's it going guys? This is Amazing Animal Adventures and welcome to episode 2 of an introduction to snake morphs. So the first of the three categories of morphs is dominant morphs. Dominant morphs are probably the easiest to understand. It's just what it sounds like. A dominant gene. Second type we're going to be talking about is called co-dominant genes. Co-dominant genes act pretty much the same as dominant genes, except that they sometimes have a blending property. We'll get into that a little bit more next week. The third category of morphs are recessive genes, or recessive morphs. These are probably the hardest to understand, and certainly the hardest to breed. We're going to be discussing co-dominant and recessive in later episodes. Today we're going to be diving into dominant morphs. This will be pretty similar to last week's, except that we're just going to be focusing on dominant morphs, so in some ways it'll just be a review and going into more detail of what a dominant morph is. This is a spider ball python. It's a very common type of dominant morph. Now let's say we want to breed this to a normal ball python. Here are our general types. Here is our planet square, just like last time. We can lay out our general types across this planet square, just like last time. And then we do exactly what we did before. We just carry the letters across. This gives us our top two general types for the offspring. We have SN and NN. So we can see right away that we have one spider and one normal. If we finish up the square, we see we have two spiders and two normals. That puts us at 50% spider ball python, 50% normal ball python. This is very similar to how last week's Punnett square worked. Now, let's say we want to breed two spider ball pythons together. Our general types are going to be identical. We can put them on our Punnett square. Carry it across. On the top, we have SS and SN. On the bottom, we have SN and NN. This is really interesting. We see something we haven't seen before. We see SS. Now, all that is, is it's just a spider. It's not going to look any different than a normal spider ball python. All this means is that when you breed this particular ball python, all the offspring are going to have at least one spider gene in them. We have two SNs and one NN. So we can conclude that we have 75% spider and 25% normal. Pretty straightforward. So that's basically how any dominant morph is going to work, especially when you're dealing with single gene morphs. And we even dove in a little bit to a double gene morph, and we see this SS gene. So when I said that, that means that it's going to always pass on the spider gene. If that doesn't make sense to you, think about putting it on a Punnett square. If you put that SS on the top of the Punnett square, it's going to carry through to every single box. Therefore, 100% of the offspring are going to have at least one spider gene. And then whatever else they have depends on the other parent. But because it fills up the two slots, it means that that spider gene is going to go into every single one of the four offspring. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of An Introduction to Snake Morphs. Stay tuned for next week when we dive into co-dominant morphs, which will be a whole other monster. And uh, the week after that, we'll dive into recessive morphs. So, uh, yeah, I hope you stay around to finish the series. If you haven't seen episode one, click here to go see it. Uh, really cool video. Other than that, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.